Hello everyone, this is Balabud and I'm joined again by Aramenko. Hello. Uh, and today we're going to actually try and stick to a bit of a plan and, you know, not ramble for two hours, you know. But, you know, speaking of rambling, that reminds me of a good story, right? <laughs> <laughs> Off on a tangent. Last, last time we discussed the kind of planning the game and why I made the game. I mean... We mostly discussed other things, but it was vaguely around that topic. Yeah, we started out with a good intention to talk about why we decided <laughs> to make a game. And then immediately went off course. Yes. Uh, th- this time, this time we've got a full plan. We're going to stick to it, right? Totally not going to go off course at all. I'm down with that. So the plan today is to talk more about like actually beginning making it. So the first thing you got to do, right? Go on. The most important thing, I, I feel, is come up with like, a visual style. Yes, and if you just start making things that don't fit together, it's going to be a mess. An identity. So, yeah, exactly. And so you know, the smart thing to do for that, I think, is to think about what it is you need to make. So for me, it was only me working on it, and I had to make, you know, almost a thousand assets alone, just from scratch. And because of this, I decided it's going to be very low poly, very cartoony, very simple. Yeah. And I'm I'm not making regular humans because. That's difficult. I'm going to make little animal creatures. Yeah, because you've got the uncanny valley element to deal with. Whenever you make a human character, it's got to have certain elements that are very correct for it to feel right. Yeah, and it's like it's a difficult thing to get spot on. It just takes a lot of extra time and effort. Whereas if you make like a little boxy animal person, you know, I can turn on like a character per day. That yeah, that's well, you can with your, uh, <laughs> with your skills. So I decided to go with that. And also, originally, I was going to make it very, like, everyone was very boxy and, like, made a very simple shape. So everyone's like, you know, a square, a triangle, something to that effect. A bit Minecrafty kind of... Yeah. Like, did you ever see the original concept art for Minecraft? I don't think that I did. Well, back before Notch fell out with everyone, he was originally, it was going to be him and a guy doing the modeling. Okay. And they had these, like, really, really actual cool-looking characters that weren't super... I mean, there was blocky, but not the same kind of blocky. A bit more like the Minecraft story mode characters. Uh, not even like that. Do you remember long ago there was a game called My Sims on the Wii? Yes, 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 yes. Kind of like that. Okay. That's similar sort of feel. Mm-hmm. Everything's like chunky and blocky. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I could get in for that. Yeah, that so I was cool. kind of going for the you know the greatest inspiration of all time for my game was My Sims on the Wii. My Sims on the Wii, the the Maxis classic. Was it yeah, Maxis? Yeah, yeah. Did Maxis actually do that one? That's irrelevant. Moving on. I don't know. <laughs> Did anyone even play My Sims? I don't think so. I mean, Sims is making a bit of resurgence now, but I don't think the My Sims IP is gonna gonna return anytime soon. I think that's long dead by now. Yes. I feel like even the devs didn't play that game. Probably not. Even they didn't even test it. Yeah, they, they give it to the testers, and the testers were just like, nah. A bit like Resi 6, the testers were just like, this is a Resident Evil game, it's perfect. <laughs> was, was testers on that game? <laughs> well, I don't know. We did sit through the entire credit sequence and it went on for ages, but I don't remember seeing QA anywhere. Yeah, actually, I don't think they were credited. Of all the people crediting that. I mean, maybe we're just zoned out by that point. But anyways, that's, I, that's I would definitely want to be uncredited as a QA on that game. I would <laughs> never get any work ever again. That's it, just your career's over instantly. Do you even know how big a bike is supposed to be? Man, like, my, my screenshot folder on Steam is just an example of how terrible that game is. Yeah. You, that, that was the only QA that's ever been done in that game, your screenshots. What if there was QA for that game, but none of them were done by humans? And they were just like, this bike is too small. How do you get your mandibles around it? <laughs> make it bigger, make it bigger. Yeah, it, was, it was done by that, like, squiddy cutting in half guy, because he was massive as well. This bike's not big enough for me. He was the quality assessor. <laughs> I couldn't sleep in a bed this small. Yeah, pathetic human bed? I don't think so. <laughs> Making everything my size. Anyway, moving on from Resident Evil <laughs> again. You decided to make uh, animal characters. Polygony animal characters. Yeah, and you know, not only the brilliance of my sims, but uh, I decided to actually like, try and use a... I was, was going to say use a Good game for inspiration. I tried. I decided to rip off a good game, Wind Waker. It is a quality title. Yep, yeah, I've got the image on screen right now that you mm. sent over. So I was looking at the the models for Wind Waker, and they're very very simple. They're very low poly, so you know it'll run nice and smooth. I don't have to worry about overloading my system. Yeah, but also unique silhouettes 
instantly yeah. recognizable and identifiable so that that and that is very important when you when you're creating a character absolutely like there was one of the main things i was focused on was the silhouettes of the character mm-hmm. and the color values i want to make sure if you put them in grayscale you can see exactly where the line should be and everything okay so i, I decided to pretty much copy the proportions of the link from wind waker yeah it has that kind of chibi cutesy feel to it so it you know it, it doesn't demand too much realism but it's still like nice to look at my thoughts at first were give him a big head because that's going to be the focus you're going to the game's mostly about talking to the villagers so give him a big old head and you can like chat with them see everything pretty clearly yeah yeah i decided it looked garbage later on changed it but for now that's how it went that's where you start. That was your starting point, man. You've got to start somewhere. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Actually, get it done. I think a lot of the time people get so bogged down and thinking, oh, it, it, it shouldn't look like this. It should look it should look better. It should look better. And, and then you don't end up doing anything. And without getting that first model built and creating a, a, a character to start off with, you, you're never going to get any further. You know what I mean? Your inspiration needs something to latch onto, something to work from. Yeah, absolutely. It's like last time when we were talking about how I used the word to plan it. It's yeah. a terrible software to use to plan anything, but just getting something down, getting the idea out, having a starting point. It's always easier to fix something that you've made than yeah. to make something completely from scratch and have it perfect first time. Because you, you've got something in front of you, you're looking at it, you're doing it. you Exactly. And it gave me something I could play around with in the engine, see what I need to change to actually get to work in the game. It was a, it was a great starting point. That's cool. I'm actually what I'm watching through the the video of you modeling in super speed now. Um, That's just how I, I like how fast they do it. I yeah, swear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was all for real. His his tail his tail looks a bit like a paintbrush. Um, <laughs> but to be so uh, that was another thing. Originally, I was going to have like lots of sort of disconnected floating parts of them, make yeah. it very stylized. It kind of showed up in the final game, but very very like subtly. Originally, it was going to be a lot more that sort of thing like kind of how his tails disconnect from the body yeah there's a separate entity i've done a little bit of that what you're doing in there um in i've done a bit of it in blender creating the characters and extruding the the points out and stuff like that and it you know when, when it starts to come together you you really start to get a feel for the, the the character itself you know you start to see it appear before you from a two-dimensional drawing to a 3d object it's it's a very very satisfying feeling and watching that um that time lapse there it, you know it's it looks really really cool and it gives and you get you get the color on there and you start to see it coming together and even if it's not perfect like you say you are building something and it's a be, it's a beginning which is what this this episode is all about i guess creating a basic version the problem, is when you're yeah. the, the problem is when you're actually making it it isn't that super satisfying sped up version it's like slowly dragged out over two hours so you don't get that payoff for a long time no, two hours isn't that bad, though, is it? I think you know people who were who were creating these kind of figures in the early days were that, getting a true. lot they less satisfying results, and they were working on it for weeks and weeks and weeks. It's amazing. And then it ended up know, looking like Sid from Toy Story. So yeah, oh, God, what um, what software were you building that in? Cinema 4D or? Yep, it's again not not the industry standard for game stuff. Everyone usually uses Maya or 3ds Max, but I had Cinema 4D installed, and I know my way around it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And you can export them and import them and what have you from any of the software anyway, so... That, that's a big thing. Whenever anyone asks, if they see an animation they like or a game they like, everyone's like, oh, what software did you use? But the truth is, if you're good, you can do the same thing in pretty much any software. In all of them, yeah. Because Unity's got a built-in 3D model and everything now as well, hasn't it? So Really? I didn't I know that. I believe so, yeah. I'm, I'm sure I've seen something about it anyway. If, if, if you get like a really skilled 3D modeler and you give him like free software such as Blender. Yeah. And, you know, something like Maya 3DS Max that's, like, incredibly expensive. You'll probably be able to make great stuff in either one of them. Yeah, absolutely. It's not the software that's doing it for him. It's, you know, his skill. Blender's incredible for for an op- open-source free piece of software. It's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. I've never, I've, never, I've never used any other ones, but, uh, yeah, I've been really impressed with it. I, I thought this would be my my big strong point for this project. It's like, you know, I don't, I don't know programming... I don't know game engines. I don't know like anything about game development or level design, anything like that. But you know, I, I know I know a bit about animation and modeling. So you know that's going to be my my one strength. Turns out I'm an idiot, right? Because it's so different modeling for a game than it is for an animation. Oh, okay. 
In what way? So when you're rigging, you kind of have to focus on like the anchor point has to be the correct orientation because you can't just change it later on. It yeah. has to be imported the correct way and everything. Uh, texturing was such a big one. Okay. In Cinema 4D, normally you just put the texture on, line it up how you want it. There you go. Easy. For this one, you have to actually do UV like, yes. the mapping. You, you only see those textures and it's like a face like all horribly splayed out. Yeah. Yeah, you have to do that. That's right, yeah, yeah. And there's like just a lot of small rules that you don't think about. Like, have you heard of the power of two rule for textures? I have not heard of the power of two rule for textures. Neither had I. I've heard of the I've heard of the rule of two for Sith Lords, but I think that's something different. Pretty much the same, honestly. <laughs> okay. No, it's uh so the power of two rule is because of how graphics card graphics cards pull information. You want all of the resolution of your textures to be like a multiple of two. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you can't have like a 500 by 500 texture. It's got to be 512 by 512. Exactly. And so just like lots of little things like that. So everything I thought I knew in my one advantage, it's actually like learn how to do it all slightly differently. Yeah, you have to kind of unpack that knowledge and then repack it in a different way in order to transfer it across. Like I'm sure a lot of it still helped. You know, oh, like for example, like animating. You have to animate everything to work on the spot and have like the same sort of sync up point. Yeah. Because, you know, if, if for example, if a guy's walking, normally an animation would actually have him move down the street. But for the game, you've got to have him walking on the spot. With, yeah, without actually moving. Yeah. And so, and it's got to be like in sync with other animations. So that that was a bit of a bit of a learning curve still. Yeah, that makes sense though. Like it, it is it is a difference, but you've got the knowledge of the software, so you come you're not coming into it completely blind. But sometimes it's actually better to come into something blind than having the wrong kind of knowledge about something. Did you think that was the case with this, or? Uh, maybe a little bit, but I don't know. I, I, I kind of love learning new stuff, so yeah. it wasn't a big deal for me to be like, "Hey, I don't know this. I'm gonna have to reteach myself what I thought I knew." That wasn't such a big deal. I, I quite enjoyed it. The weirdest one, I remember like I had to explain this to my teacher because I was still on the course. This was back in 2016, you know. Cast, cast your mind back to 2016 again. Again? Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, I'm there. Yeah, when I was, I was handing this in for my college project, I remember trying to explain why I did all the animations to the teacher because he was incredibly confused. For example, the jump animation. You'd think it'd be one animation of him jumping, right? Yes. Actually, three animations. So there's one of him beginning the jump and like taking off. And then there's a loop of him in the air. And then right. there's an animation of him landing. Yeah, that makes sense. And he's kind of like very confused. Like, why would, you, why would you do that? Why is there like a million animations for every single thing? But you've got to think of like, if you jump from a high object to a low object, you're going to be in the air for longer than if you jump on the spot, right? Yes. And so you have to like loop for the distance of how long you're in there and then land. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I'd never thought about sense? it like that before. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It does because of timing. And I think that's why in a lot of a lot of games you, you jump and well, I mean, I've seen it in some high budget games. I think it was uh, Final Fantasy 13 2. I remember thinking that the jumping animation for that was so bad and so off, and I think that's what it was because there wasn't an animation for jumping, an animation for being in the air, an animation for landing. There was an animation for jumping, and there was an animation for landing, and it always just did that. It just froze at the top and stayed in the up, and then just came to the down one again. Yeah, I've noticed that in a few games. They like they played the the jump one and then just freeze at the end of yeah. it. Yeah. And it was so... I always remember that being a really weird thing about that game, that it was just super, super off-putting. Um, was was that the one with lightning? It was the one... Lightning came back. I never actually finished the game. I didn't play it for very long. I, I think I borrowed it off someone and was like, this jumping animation is so bad, I'm going to stop. Playing this <laughs> um, that's it. That's the one flaw with that game when you were out. But it wasn't... It wasn't play, you weren't playing as lightning. You were playing as some dude in the beginning. Um... I've heard those games are pretty garbage. I know I played them. But I played 13 I all the way through, and I thought that was okay. Um, it definitely had its moments. Some of it, some of it was very good, but a lot of it was just pure fucking trash. Do you know, I found like the Final Fantasy VII remake came out recently. Yes, it did. And I've seen I've seen so many people complaining that the story makes no sense. It never did. And I'm like, it's, 
Yeah, it's like Final Fantasy. None of them make any sense. It never made any sense at all. It was absolutely fucking bonkers. What I find weird about that is that they've stretched 40 hours worth of gameplay out of what took four or five hours in the first game. And Yeah, it's, that's a weird choice, right? I'm a huge fan. An absolutely monumentally massive fan of Final Fantasy, particularly Final Fantasy VII, but I haven't picked it up. I did play the demo, and I haven't picked it up. I think that tells you all you need to know um, yeah. about how but I feel about it. I kind of feel like it's either going to get dropped, or they're going to finish it, and it's going to be like a package version with the whole game in. If they never finish that, that will be a massive PR disaster. I think they have to finish it now that they've started it, but I guess we'll wait and see, won't we? Anyway. I mean, I'm just, think- I'm, I'm just thinking, like, it's the dawn of the new consoles... Yeah. And it's t- it took like five years to make that version. Yeah. By the time the final one comes out, we're going to be looking at the fucking PS6. <laughs> right. And the Xbox 8400B, or whatever the fuck they're going to name it. <laughs> it's, you know it's going to be a terrible name when yeah, it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolute cash. So, but should we, anyway, should we anyways, move on to but, importing to the engine? Yeah, so w- once I had the model done, he's rigged, he's textured, all ready to go. You know, I try to put him in the engine and just have them sort of walk around get the animation set up it was a bit tricky i'd say but like not not too bad you can figure it out just by playing around but you had the soccer ball already in play at this point i see yeah for, for some reason that was like one of the first things i made i just wanted a physical object for him to mess around with uh, yeah an interactable physics prop basically yeah and it was kind of also to try out making collision meshes so yeah. as well as having the actual mesh of the object, you have an invisible mesh around it, which is used for physics. Okay. It's usually like a lot more simple. Kind of think of like hitboxes in yeah, the shooting yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Instead of like having to calculate if it hit this exact polygon on like a three million polygon object, you put you say a like, hey, lower po- lower yeah. poly model. Did it hit this cube? It was like roughly the size of his head. Yeah. So kind of the same way you have collision meshes, which is a much simpler version that goes around. Whatever you want it to interact with. And so for the football, I made... For, sorry, for the soccer ball... Soccer ball. I, <laughs> for I, our I see, I, audience. Yeah, I make, I make that mistake so much, yeah, since yeah, I moved. Yeah, I bet, man. Oh, God. The, the worst thing is, like, I had a guy tell me not to say it. He's like, eh, that should be soccer for you. I'm not sorry, the way he's like, eh, that should be football for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, so, why, yeah. why? Like, I changed it to soccer, like... For you guys, like uh, no, like don't 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 try to do that. Like just just say just say football. We'll know what it means. Will you though? If, like yeah, if, think everyone you? else didn't. <laughs> when I say football, do you not automatically conjure an image of hand egg? Yeah, exactly. Good old American hand egg. <laughs> well, other, hand here egg. they have Canadian football, which is a whole different thing. Okay, like is that like so, a bit like Aussie rules or something? Yeah. So you have football, you have American football, and then you have soccer. That's so confusing, mm. man. Not to be confused with rugby, of course. Oh, luckily over here they they love football, so they just call it football. Yeah, it's like the only sport in that country, I feel. Uh, Unless I you're rich, and then you got cricket. Ah, uh, that's in England, though, yeah. Over here it's ice hockey. Oh, yeah, so. Uh, I, I was thinking England there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forget that I'm not there anymore. In Good old, good old blighty. You'll, you'll always be a filthy Brit to me. Yeah, absolutely. And, and same to you, man. Same to you. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you. I know, absolutely. We're both filthy Tynesiders. <laughs> So, anyways, back to the, the engine. Yes. So, the, the original tests, it was just like a, a grey block. And you could run around it. You could, I mean, incline, you could go up and down. Yeah. Make sure like, you interact with that fine. You could move at different speeds and it would animate him differently based on if he's running or walking. And you could jump up and down and kick a soccer ball around. Okay. Pretty simple stuff. But absolutely vital at the same time. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I started making like other random props. Just again, do more testing. If you like, if you look at the area from that original test area, you may notice the texture is just the the town gate area from the Animal Crossing animation I did many years ago. Oh, is it really? Oh yeah. man, it's like it's horribly stretched over the mesh. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just blinked yeah. on those steps there. It's also for the steps. Instead of like doing every step as having a collision box, it's actually just a ramp. The yeah, but then it's, mm-hmm. that makes sense though. Why why make it more difficult for yourself? Exactly. It's like one polygon instead of, you know, two for every step. Yeah, single so, slope. You know, after I had him actually like walking around, it's, you know, it's starting to almost, dare I say, resemble a game. 
Yeah, yeah, it does, man. It does. It resembles a game so much more than that amazing game that the the guy from college right. took a year to make. You know, like the, it's it's already past the point of his entire year project. To be it's fair, like you when, you, when you as soon as you put down the first vertis, uh, vertis on <laughs> a three D model, it had surpassed what he'd made. Like, yeah. So, hey, look at that. It's a polygon. Oh, my God. This guy's he's just beat everything I'll ever do. He's making a game. So, I, I like how it's like the finished entire episode, just pretty much mugging that guy, and then we're still going back for seconds. <laughs> yeah. You've got to call back to old episodes, man. If there's anything I learned from the podcast, you have to call back to It's the law. Jokes. Law of podcasts. Yeah, absolutely, man. So, um, after I had a basic version of the game set up, and he's moving around, I need a place for him to move around in. Yes. And so I was, I was having a lot of thoughts with the, the area it was going to be set. Ridgen's going to do a big city, mm-hmm. and I was going to have like a whole bunch of NPCs. I was going to kind of have like sheep people that you couldn't interact with, but they were just like the generic NPC in the background. When you said this, my mind immediately went to um, Catherine. Oh, I love that game. All the, all the sheep people, man. They threw where they were freaky as fuck. You didn't go down that path. You didn't make a massive city. Yeah, I, I think my reason for that was... You know, reaching my plan was have a huge city, have people walking around, it'll look very alive. Mm-hmm. But the people you interact with will kind of be like so spread out and it's kind of like artificially filling the game. You know, it's like, hey, this game takes hours to beat, but most of it is just because you have to walk like 10 minutes to get to each character. Yeah, and I think that's a huge problem in the industry right now. This this padding uh, or filler content, as, as, as they call it in animation generally, uh, the padding content where, you know, collect a hundred of these. You know, oh, I hear and, that. And walking back and forwards to a place is just another, it's just another mode of padding, unless it's a game that is so unbelievably beautiful that you that that actually taking in the scenery is part of the game itself like uh journey or yeah in, in some some instance red dead redemption 2 you know just traveling from place to place is is a is a pure joy in in games like the two that i've just mentioned um and more i'm sure there's a lot more but when you're trying to make something that's a bit more story driven a little bit more simplified then i think Going for a more condensed space, play space. I really think that was a smart move on your part in this instance, man. Like because you, it's allowed you to focus so much more and put so much more character into the space that you've decided to work with. Is that why you did it, or was it something else? No, it was, it was pretty much that. I wanted to be just big enough, like just as big as it needed to be, and no bigger. Mm-hmm just like have a very condensed everything I need in there so I'm just like hey this goes on for miles and miles but it's all the same there's nothing interesting in there but when you say everything that you need what do you mean by that like um, areas for interaction or was there some other specific goal that you had in mind when you were doing uh, it's kind of so a lot of it was the layout so I've, I've got a lovely plan of the map there that you might be able to see yeah yeah I'm looking at it right now and I had a very so the, the idea of this game which we still haven't mentioned in the entire like first episode of this. You have like limited time to spend with each character. You have to choose who to spend time with. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like the idea of you play it multiple times. You can't see everyone's story in one go. And it's all about like choosing who to spend time with. Oh, so what you're saying is that your game offers replayability. It's now <laughs> on Steam, by the way. <laughs> but like so it instead of just having it very straightforward and be like, hey, go, here's a person right in front of you. I want to do the tutorial completely separate from any choices. Yeah. So like when you wake up in the bed at the beginning, that's teaching you how to talk to people, but without any real consequences. Mm-hmm. And then when you leave, it's on a very straight path that immediately opens up and there's no one directly ahead of you. But once you get to the point where it's opened up, any way you look, you will see multiple people. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. You're kind of like you forced to get to a point where the, you then have to choose a direction to go in any you direction. Make, yeah. There will be a person. Yeah. Even subconsciously, on the first turn, you're making a decision without realizing it. Yeah. And that, like, yeah. In, in, instead of sort of just being like, hey, here's a guy, choose which one you want next. It's like instantly you kind of naturally have to make a choice. But I, I like this, the style of the town that you went for as well. You know, it, 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 had, it, it felt kind of timeless. It felt kind of locationless. All right, it had, for me, because of personal experience, it had a slight small English seaside town vibe to it but I think 
anybody else coming into it might get a completely different impression. Um, and it, it it felt like there were nooks and crannies and places to explore and things hidden out of the way that you weren't seeing immediately, that weren't immediately obvious. So it had, you know, that sense of intrigue as well, which I think sort of sums it up perfectly because it's it's interesting without being overbearing, if you like. Yeah, so it's interesting you say it's like timeless because I, that was kind of the feeling I went for, mm-hmm. and it was like a weird mix of nailed it. I was using, yeah, I was using <laughs> like a a weird mix of nineteen fifties American houses, okay, but also of like kind of English seaside, like as you said, like yeah, lot, it's it's very Whitley Bay. It, it is, yeah, it's that, especially the the sort of pier area and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. like you say, the buildings, they 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 don't make you th- you think immediately of a, a location or an era. Um, they they're just the houses, and that to achieve that is something re- really clever. I feel that that you've done there because you've 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 built something, and it's it's like oh, it's a house. Yeah, but when's it from? Where's it from? Is it modern? Is it old fashioned? No. It's all of them. Speaking of main houses, I wanted there to be a house per character. Because I, I, I didn't want it to be, hey, there's six houses and 18 characters. Yeah, that that always takes you out of it, doesn't it? When you're playing a game, you're like, well, where, does all, where do all of these people live? Where do they go at night? And I, I didn't want it to be kind of also the opposite way of like, hey, here's like a whole city, but there's only like a handful of characters. Twelve like, guys, yeah. What's What's all these other buildings for that you can't interact with? Or go anywhere near. Yes, you can just see when you look at them from a distance. Oh yeah, that door doesn't fucking open. I want to make one house per character, but I want them all to be kind of unique. Like you know, have the same feel, but not just be copy and pasted. Yeah, so they fit together without being identical. Like yes, like exactly. They're not, they're not IKEA houses. And so what I did was I built a bunch of separate parts that all had the same anchor point. Right. And then for some of them I had like two variations of the textures. The idea was, if I take all these parts, put them in the engine, I can just choose which ones I want. So I'd be like, hey, I want this shape for the base of the house. I want to have a side garage. I want to have this type of roof. I want to have this kind of window, this kind of door. And then I just drag it out and it was like 90% made. Just had to tweak a few textures to make them match. Yeah, that's a smart strategy, actually. I, I'm just looking at that little clip that you've put in there. And that that really clever. I think quite a few games are using that kind of idea now. I've been watching quite a few playthroughs of a game called Foundation. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, it's a city, it's a city building game and it has that element where you can the, the, there's an element to it where you can build like churches and manor houses and as you upgrade them you unlock more parts and you can add them on a bit like what you what you've got there kind of thing so that that you bring in a new section all right it's not overlaid like yours is but you modular i think is the the proper way to describe it you have this modular building method um and i've i've not i've never i mean i don't know how it's done generally in games but i've not seen or heard of anybody building modular framework like that for a city in a game i think that's clever I like that. Yeah, it was a, I just figured that'd be a lot quicker than modeling each house individually. Yeah, man. I think that was really smart. And so just drag out like 18 houses. There you go. Sorted. Easy peasy. And then I've got the the bear map in front of me. The, the bear map? The, the bear map. The map of bears. No, I'm looking at the, the creating a house video that you that you sent over uh, okay. without any of the uh, buildings on. I, I, I think like a grizzly bear. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I know where to know where to find the bears now on you. It's all animals, yeah, exactly. isn't it? You know, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I don't think there's a bear in there. I no, missed there a trick there. I don't I should have a bear. bear. Everyone loves bears. Who doesn't? Um, Nobody. So I made that original plan, made the the bear map, and then dragged <laughs> all the houses in, and the props I made earlier for the collision test. And that was and what, that was like a basic environment. It was still, you know, it needed walls. It needed the sea and the dock and individual like sort of key buildings that were very different, such as the shop, the diner, the yeah, and church. And things like the park and stuff like that. It was kind of a, a good basis to work with. I wanted to ask, by the way, if the, there was any thinking behind the shape of the map. Well, as I saw touching on this before, where I wanted it to force you down a one-way street with zero choices, and then from there, you can't keep going forward, you have to choose left or right, and whichever uh, way you go, yeah, there's okay. multiple people. You can see that when you look when you look at the 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 map that you've 
created here, the one that you're going to show in the video, I guess, where it starts narrow at the bottom and then suddenly it's this big wide expanse at the top. On top of that, I want to make it any character you go to, they will then show you a, like another character on top of the original choices. So for example, if you choose the person you can see up top, to get up top, you have to pass by either way yeah, you go. Yeah, okay. If you go left, you'll pass by the pig. If you go right, you'll pass by the fox. And that gives you that idea that you're um, missing something or that you're experiencing something else and gives you the thought that you need to come back and play this game again and again. Also just like kind of shows you more and more options instead of like all at once like boom he has 18 characters it's kind of shows you like hey here's a couple of choices and each one of them has a couple of choices and then each one of them has a couple of choices kind of branching out i like it like the um trousers of time several branches each going off each time i don't know what that is (laughs) you know no no it's uh it's like the parallel universe theory you know each each decision at each point in time creates a new branch or a new leg in the trousers of time as you like and the trousers of time go on infinitely each one creating new branches or trouser legs you've never heard that phrase before it's a terry pratchett man it's Ah, but it does sound very terry pratchett yeah yeah, it is one of his uh science of the disc world novels it's like his explanation for i think it's stephen hawkins theory of, of time but I'm not 100% sure on that. Every time I see anything about Discworld, it seems so interesting, but like there's so much of it now that I, I'm yeah. always too scared to get into it. It is hard. It is difficult to get into. I mean, I started reading it when I was really young, so like I've, I've, I think I've read every every novel um, that there is in the in the whole series because I started I started as a kid with the he did like some young adult novels the truckers diggers and wings one and I read those when I was really little and then moved graduated on and actually I should go back and read the whole thing again because I bet there's a lot of jokes in the ones that I read in the early days that just went straight over my head because I was far too young to understand them but yeah, uh, probably. yeah obviously keeping with it through my whole life basically I I, uh, I managed to read them all and there ain't going to be any more is there so that's true do you know his daughter writes for video games does she I did not know that I think she wrote Mirror's Edge okay just, just the first one not Cataclysm I don't know because the first Mirror's Edge was excellent yeah I remember the first one it was kind of the gameplay was done from what this is what I heard you know I didn't work on it I can't tell you for sure but what I heard was the gameplay was done but there wasn't really much of a story I've heard something about that as well. And so they were just like, hey, like, get old Pratchett in. And yeah, I'm just be like, hey, this, this is the what we have. You have to make a story that links this up. That would make sense, though, because the obviously the, the game is all in engine. And then all of the story elements in between are just like a comic book kind of thing. Yeah, apparently it's kind of like almost like an afterthought. And she had to write the story based on what was already there. So she can't be like, they go to this area. It's like, no, you have to go to this no, area don't. at this time. Like, <laughs> this is the way that the game goes. It'd be such yeah. a restrictive way to write. Yeah, I, it makes sense, but it shows skill to be able to weave it together, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I think it'd be so difficult. I would hate to write like that. Yeah, definitely. So, but anyways, back back to the game. Like, oh yeah, sorry, yeah, we were talking We about love going off topic. I remember. Oh man, it can't be helped. It cannot be avoided. <laughs> it's, we're up to nearly an hour already, so... Go figure. <laughs> See, you know, you know what I said. Like, this is going to be ten minutes. This time we're going to stick to the pl- uh, plan. And it's going to be ten minutes easy. Yeah. So, anyways, we're, we're almost done with this one. Uh, the last thing I, I sort of did for getting the original version down was I had to build an NPC, someone you could interact with. Yep. I didn't want to make a model for this yet. You know, I had a perfectly good fox model there, so I just copied him and I made three new animations. Uh, one for talking. One for turning left, one for turning right. That's like all there was to him. Okay. And I sort of just programmed him to turn his body to look at you on a kind of horizontal plane and then turn his head to look at you vertically. Oh, uh, yeah. I can see that he's doing that. And then That's cool. as, as you talk to him, your Fox character has two animations for the left op- talking option and the right talking option, which yep. he waves a different hand. One, of, Which was one of the earliest concepts in, in your game. Um, that, that idea of communicating your decision, uh, which you used the mouse buttons for, if I remember correctly. I did. It was, exactly. it was a right-click. very different 
communication method compared to yeah. most games. Most games, you go talk to someone, it freezes, you get a menu up, and it's like, choose which, you, which thing you want to say. One, two, three, four, five kind of thing. Yeah, but I always felt like that kind of takes it out of the game. You like you don't feel like you're playing anymore, you feel like you're suddenly in a menu. Yeah, it definitely does. And I think uh, when games do have a, a conversation system that doesn't stop everything moving, it makes it feel so much more believable. Yeah, so f- for this one, I want to be like, if just walking up to them, the conversation has started. You know, you don't have to like go there and then interact and be like, hi, I'm starting conversation with you. Yeah. Every time your character speaks, you always have a choice. There's never one way he just talks for you. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, it's very simple, just left or right. There's always just two choices. Very fluid. You're not like sitting there going like, oh, what about this one? What about yeah. this one? Having to read a bunch of options. It's and not like is... Mass Effect where you choose disagree and he's like, fuck you, I'm going to shoot this whole place <laughs> up, you bitches. So I, I didn't want to say that. I completely like, disagree. <laughs> Just say no. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I also wanted to keep on. it like very short, almost like a tweet in them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that way, it's like very snappy. It's not like. Did you play the new like DS X games? I played Where... the first one mm. for a while. Yeah, like hover over each thing you want to say. So, but like disagree, and then you hover over it, and it gives you like a full long line of what he will say if you yeah. hit disagree. A whole bunch of choices which is great for that type of game but it doesn't yeah absolutely. Everything. i love that game but I, do, I just wanted to be like very very snappy very quick you can walk away from a conversation at any time like it's never <laughs> never takes I am, control fuck away this from shit you. i'm out <laughs> yeah <laughs> so like yeah the, the whole thing i just wanted to be you're always in complete control of your character yeah it's it's you never like hey you're locked into a menu now you have to choose an option no you can walk away you can choose either one very naturally it's the same as when you're in a conversation Controls yeah exactly i honestly same, yeah. didn't give it that much thought when i when I, when i've played it but yeah that that is a really good point you you have got that kind of ability to just walk around uh, while you have the conversation or choose to not even continue the conversation which is pretty cool yeah i feel like it would even though it would accomplish the same thing i feel it would have a very different feel of a game if every time you went over to someone it like froze and you got a dialogue box up at the bottom yeah I do, I, I do agree with that. I think AAA developers could take, could take some lessons from this. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know about that now, but... <laughs> yeah, after I got that NPC done, that was pretty much a base work of everything I needed for the game. I just needed like a lot, lot more of it. So, you know, I just had to make more models the same as I made for the Fox, yep. for all the NPCs, write more dialogue for them, same as they did for the test version, make more buildings the same as they did for the buildings I already had. So after that, it was just a case of knuckling down and, and doing the kind of grunt work. Yeah. It was, it was really satisfying to see this point because I'm like, hey, this works. I've made a functioning game. Like, sure, it's not like a full game that you'd anyone want to play. But yeah, it, but it's definitely it, enough yeah. to pass a course. Yeah. I mean, that is pretty much what I handed in for the course. And you know, I, I got a distinction of using my work as you know, an example for the next year. They were very shining stellar example of <laughs> battle board. It's like it was a, it was you know, it was a functioning prototype for a game. Yeah, it's a proof of concept, isn't it? Yeah, and so and that, that, you know that, that was pretty good. That was very satisfying to see. Good job, man. Let's pat on the back yeah, all round for battle board. Pat, pat myself on the back for that one. Bravo, but, sir. Yeah, I, I think next time we'll talk about you know actually expanding upon it, designing characters, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe redesigning the fox because. He looks terrible in this original version. He's got, he's still got the same color palette. Yeah, I mean that's that's important though. You, you got to have a, you know, the orange fox. And it's it's a really good, it's a really good color. Not just the orange fox, but the the jumper and the and the trousers and everything. It's it, it's a very very well designed. I love that kind of old pastel kind of washed out vibe that you've gone through through the whole the whole game. It looks really really nice. Yeah, I, th- I think we'll talk a bit about that next time as well, like the actual yeah, design sure. process. We kind of glossed over that this time. But, you know, for now, we've got to do the most important part of this show, which we is do. Kevin's spicy segments. Good old Kev. Okay, so for the comment section, you know, I was, I was looking, there's a comment on both the last two videos. Oh, there is? Yeah. And oh, the thing shit, is, though, son. it happened on the last video, like, five minutes after it was uploaded, and it's a 40-minute video. Uh, yes. I mean, you know, people can watch things. Too, some people do watch things on two times speed, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You, just, you just watched it on, like, Eight times speed. Yeah, all the way through. And like he says the same thing on almost like almost the same thing on both of them. We're just seeing great work. 
keep working hard. Also, let's be friends. And he said on the other video as well, we should be friends. Which other video did he comment on? Uh, the one that was just saying I'm not dead. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. A very important update, saying I'm not dead. And he said he said he wanted to be friends on there as well. So good, more please. Also, I want to be friends. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm curious if this guy's actually watching these videos. Is he legit? I don't know. It, it seems Should a little we... bit like a bot, so... Here, here's a plan. Let's give him a phrase that he has to comment this video... Um, in order to make us believe is real. If he gets it, we will both subscribe to his channel and give it a shout out on the next episode. Yeah. If if you get it, Aramengo will subscribe to your channel and give you a shout out. I will, a hundred percent. Um so what what phrase should we ask him to, to... Uh how about he loves Big Kev's spicy segments. That's perfect. So you have to type I love Big Kev's spicy segment let's be friends on this, <laughs> on this video anybody who comments that we will subscribe and uh, also there was an update from the guy on Steam who managed to break the game oh, okay oh good good but he refunded it right so did he buy it again well you... I thought he refunded it because there was a refund came up immediately at the same time as like he was complaining about it last time okay but then he complained again this time saying like hey I tried the I tried the fix and it didn't work. It's given me multiple resolutions. I don't know what that means. Because, you know, it should just set, you press the button, it sets it to the small resolution. He's like, oh, it's, it's showing me multiple resolutions now. Multiple resolutions? Yeah, like, is it changing sizes rapidly? Is, is it, that, is it like, one for each eye? <laughs> yeah. Is he trying like, to play it in VR? It all, it all makes sense now. That's the only thing I can think that he's... That... That would make it show multiple resolutions. Is he trying to play it across two monitors? I don't know. This is like a month after, like he originally asked for a fix, and I fixed it for him. And then like a month later, he's like, "It's giving me multiple resolutions." Like he, he didn't try until then. So I don't know what's happening with that guy. I don't know if he actually did refund it and bought it again, or if he just didn't refund it and someone else happened to refund it at the same time. If you're watching this, multiple resolution guys, uh, guy. Give us, give us some more clarification on that one, and we'll see if we can. Send me an image or something. I'm very confused. I'll speak to the boys in, in, in coding and see if we can get into the hot <laughs> for you. Yeah. I'm the boys in coding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're the one I speak to. So I'm, I'm the boys in every department of this operation. <laughs> exactly. And I have nothing to do with it, so don't <laughs> talk to me. <laughs> so, anyways, I think we should wrap this up. So Yeah, for sure, man. You know, last, last episode... Didn't do great. People sucking did not help it out, surprisingly. The tags, people sucking, did not work. It did not work. It actually got less views than the original video saying I didn't die. Oh, so, you know, snap. this time, it's on your shoulders. You've got to you've got to fix this problem. You've got to but tell us the new tag. Maybe it's, maybe it's the length and the rambling nature that, that, that's no, turning No, no, it can't be. It couldn't be at all. So we need a, a new tag. How about hashtag off topic? Sure. Hashtag off topic. That's the that's the hot new tag that's going to get us a million views for this episode. Because I, 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 well, you put me on the spot there to come up with one, and it was b between that and just chatting because you know that is shit hot property on Twitch right now. That is uh, true. It's the second most popular game on Twitch. We'll go with both. Is we going to go do just just chatting as well? Yeah, I feel I feel like you had it much harder last time. We talked about everything. I had a million choices. This time That's it's like things. we actually talked about the game a bit and it makes it much more difficult to come up with a tag, I feel. Sort of kept it minimally focused. I mean, it's still like an hour of recording. Yeah, exactly. But As you know, that, that's, that's half right of what now. we recorded for last time, so... Yeah, so you know we're getting better. We're getting more yeah. synced as time goes on. And as next episode will be thirty the, minutes. The one after that, fifteen. As we get into the longer and longer topics, we'll get shorter and shorter and shorter, and be like, make game, exactly. game good, play game. <laughs> Okay, so let's wrap it up there. We'll go play some games. Yeah, man. Thanks thanks for inviting me again. It's been really fun. Um, no problem. Thanks, thanks for being here. I'll speak to you in three seconds when we go to play games. Sounds good. See you there. Goodbye, everyone.